Welcome to another segment of Lore You Should Know. This is me, Greg Tito, and I like to use this segment to talk to, in this case, Wes Schneider. Hi, Wes. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me. Uh, we are going to talk uh, about little bits of Dungeons & Dragons lore that is going to be exciting about an upcoming book uh, for you to use potentially in your game, but also just for the fun of knowing this crazy stuff as we talk about Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft coming out on May 18th. This segment is going to touch more on Barovia and what is going on, not necessarily post-Curse of Strahd, but how this uh, book adds to the storytelling around uh, that specific domain of dread. And we'll be talking about much more domains of dread. Uh, so Wes, for folks who may not have played through Curse of Strahd uh, or, you know, Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft might be their first introduction to the domain of Barovia. What's the kind of the overview of what's going on in this little world? So Barovia is very much for the domains of dread and for Ravenloft as a campaign setting, the, the keystone, the heart of the whole setting, because this is your domain for gothic horror, for tiny villages, for scared people, for there's a creepy castle up on the hill, and in there is a brooding vampire overlord. And this is one of the most famous of the uh, Dark Lords of Ravenloft, Strahd von Zarvich. And the castle is Castle Ravenloft, which gives the entire campaign setting its name. That is awesome. I didn't even think about it until you mentioned it here, but like gothic horror is a little bit the keystone of modern horror in a way too, right? Well, it's, it's gothic horror is fascinating because it, it comes from this like centuries old romantic tradition about like deep emotion and feeling and over the top sort of, um, characters and reactions to things. So that's really the heart of the sense of, of the storytelling tradition of like ghost stories and like creating dread and how can you use your words to elicit a reaction from your players. And sometimes that's, you know, positive and fun and that's a happy story, but sometimes that's also like you can you can really creep people out. You can have them quaking in their boots. You can be telling them a creepy story. And that's that's part of the core of Ravenloft as a Dungeons & Dragons setting, like telling stories with your friends that, you know, give you that surge of adrenaline. Yeah, yeah. And that began, well, not sorry, began, but like that idea of, you know, vampires and, and this kind of gothic horror thing, uh, for many folks, you know, was Bram Stoker's Dracula, not the movie, but the, the, the actual novel, uh, Dracula, you know, kind of entered into our, as I said, modern sensibilities of storytelling. And then when Dungeons and Dragons came on the, on the scene and, you know, uh, Laura and Tracy Hickman wanted to, uh, you know, expand upon the idea of vampires in Dungeons and Dragons, they latched upon that idea of, of Dracula as a, you know, kind of a, a touchstone. Absolutely. Barovia is very much D&D Transylvania. I, I don't think anybody's going to be surprised. Like, <laughs> Rod von Zarovich is very much D&D's Dracula and has that place as, like, the Ur-Vampire Lord, the first vampire, the progenitor, the ancient, and the one who has, like, absolute dominion over all of his creepy vampire kingdom. Yeah, and like Dracula... Uh, Strahd von Zerovich has a kind of deep romantic connection to one's soul, I guess you could say. Yes. So uh, Dr just like Dracula has this lengthy history that from one perspective is very tragic, from another perspective is very deserved. Um, Strahd has the same sort of... I was a young warrior. I crusaded for my people. I spent my childhood uh, in my youth uh, fighting. And then I came back and I was older and I had missed out on much of my life. And I felt like I deserved things. And then he had his younger brother, Sergei, who was everything he wanted to be, like youthful and carefree and in love. Um, and Strahd ended up seeing Sergei becoming very jealous of that and 
in addition to that, becoming very envious of Sergei's uh, fiance Tatiana, uh, and that led him down a path of um, dark magic and despair that led to ultimately the creation of the Demi Plains of Dread. Yeah, so that is part of D and D lore, right? That that is that act or whatever you know that uh, arc uh, and several acts within that arc is what ended up splintering off these domains of dread from uh from what was it what, is it from in the D cosmology where does where do these domains of dread actually live well that's that's one of the interesting elements because there's a couple of different answers to that like from the the most modern answer to that like from the all right where your campaign is probably set the domains of dread are hidden away in a corner of the shadow fell so they are a place that's squirreled away in one of the darkest most mysterious places of the entire multiverse and a place where even arguably the, the gods and other major powers of the multiverse can't get at, at least not easily. So, and these are the dominion of another host of sinister powers um, that preside over that. But all of the individual pieces of the domains of dread are either creations, demi-planner creations of the dark powers to be sort of prison realms for these, for their prisoners, for these dark lords, or in some cases, straight up like pieces of worlds on the material plane that have been stolen and abducted and placed wholesale within the domains of dread. Oh, interesting. So where where does Barovia fit in that spectrum? So Barovia we've been cagey with over the <laughs> decades last 40, yeah, last 40 or so years. Um and the original uh, Ravenloft Adventure and uh, Ravenloft 2, The House on Griffin Hill, suggest hints of a wider world, but never really shine the spotlight on that. Barovia comes from a land where he was a crusader. In The House on Griffin Hill, just off the map is some mysterious theocracy. But a lot of that is hand-waved to focus on what the horror du jour is. In Curse of Strahd, we see a few more hints of this with uh, some additional details on Strahd's backstory, some characters from his uh, history and organizations that uh, spin around that, like the Priests of Asibus or the Almost Inquisition. They hint at the world that Barovia came from. We also know that some groups like the Vistani also initially come from that world, mm. but what that world is remains sort of left off in the mists as this before place, where. but now the focus is on the characters, the players, and the um, ever-repeating tragedies that are unfolding in Barovia in the Domains of Dread. I like, I like the idea somehow, and I don't know if this is, this is my headcanon, but that, that this piece of, of, of this world is now in a Domain of Dread that's within the Shadowfell, but then the rest of the world is gone somehow. Whatever happened is, is no longer existing. Maybe it just, you know... Uh, uh, disappeared because their deities left or whatever, but like yep. this is the only fragment that's left of this world and distorted and uh, horrific as it may be. Absolutely. And I mean, there's some interesting hints throughout Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft that point towards just little tidbits of what might have happened, what might have unfolded after uh, Barovia was claimed or before it was claimed. These are things that are purposefully seeded throughout the book. So if you want to play in that space, you absolutely can. One of the big elements, and this is something that goes back to the first Ravenloft adventure, is there's a fantastic series of uh, encounter areas uh, in the, the crypts of Castle Ravenloft, where it just gives you character after character name, names on these tombstones. And some of them are like eye-rollingly jokey, but some of them are also just like, who's that? Who's this story? Like, oh, there's this wizard? What? Uh, but that's all you know. Um, and then other incarnations of the adventure have played with those names, played with those characters. Um, even the, the uh, 
90s campaign setting for Ravenloft Domains of Dread um, picks up some of those characters. So um, you'll even see characters like Ivana Baretsi and uh, Ivan Deliznia, actually specifically the Deliznia family, is mentioned within the tombs of Ravenloft. But then if you look a few pages ahead, you'll see that another Deliznia is one of the Dark Lords of the Domain of Borka. So oh. there's this connection through Barovia, through these histories that has enca- that has captured more than just the von Zarovich family. Interesting. Um, and the other kind of group that comes from uh, Barovia is the vampire hunters, the people who are kind of in opposition to Strahd, uh, Van Richten himself, as well as his protege, uh, Esmeralda. Yes. Um, so we have characters like um, th- like Van Richten, like Esmeralda, who you've noted, are very much engaged with the core story of Barovia. Something that you'll see throughout Van Richten's guide is we present every one of these domains as pretty much a micro setting, but a micro setting designed to do a very specific type of stories. Yes, you can go to Barovia. You could tell an exciting story about hunting dragons or tracking down werewolves or running a bakery or whatever have you. All of these are possibilities. But let's be honest, if you're in Barovia, you're probably there for, let's get a, let's get a vampire. Right. Um, so why is, where did Van Richten come from? Was, was he in Barovia? So Van Richten go like comes from way back in uh in Ravenloft lore, but ultimately he's not a na- native of Barovia. Van mm. Richten's story starts in the domain of Darkon, where he suffered a tragic experience, lost much of his family, ended up running afoul of another vampire, and ultimately getting out of that domain and moving on to settle uh, in another domain called Mordent, um, which is much more sort of ghost story country, very much inspired by like the English countryside, so on and so forth. But he became a scholar, a monster hunter, and a writer who you'll see from past books like Van Richten's Guide to Vampires, Van Richten's Guide to the Created, Van Richten's Guide to the Ancient Dead, so on and so forth. These were all touted as being Van Richten's actual published works that wow. were in-world books that other people in the Domains of Dread could read. It's, uh, it's a trope that uh, D&D has used often with Volo and, uh, and others throughout uh, Abs- D&D. Oh, absolutely. But it's also one of these things where it's like even... <sighs> One of the reasons D&D does it is because it's a fantastic narrative choice to get, you know, get your characters across. But it's also particularly pertinent for Ravenloft and Barovia specifically, as that epistolary style was was how Dracula was written. Dracula's entirely oh. a collection of letters and reports and... Um, journal entries and whatnot from all of the different characters. So that was part of the reason that for Van Richten's guide for the introduction, it's like, we need to fill this up with letters from the various characters corresponding with each other. That's brilliant. I didn't realize that, but that's such a, a great insight. And, and what a great choice uh, to, to kind of frame it around um, for, for this book. Um, so Van Richten comes from a different part of, uh, of, the, of the Ravenloft thing. Looks like he's in, t- yeah. in touch with a lot of different domains. Um, but Esmeralda uh, has a very specific connection to, to Barovia and the Strahd story. So what, uh, what type of stuff will players or uh, you know, readers of Van Richten's Guide get that they might not have gotten from Curse of Strahd or other stuff? So one of the lovely things about coming to a book and a campaign setting like Van Richten's Guide, when there's already been such a deep story, not just told through Van Richten's, uh, or not just told through um, Ravenloft adventures that have come before, but also through Curse of Strahd, is we've got a ton of characters already that people know and that people love. And Esmeralda has always been one of the more, more modern incarnations of all right, here's a vampire who's actually 
youthful, zealous, out and about, and like has a mission, where Van Richten is very much shockingly, I know, like a Van Helsing stand-in. What? Um, yeah, right? Um, <laughs> getting your... Van Helsing has a huge role in Dracula, but he's also aided by, you know, like, Quincy the Texan with a gun, and like, Arthur Homewood, and like, you... Um, There's a whole group, Mina right? Harker. Like, Almost exactly. like, a, like a D&D party. It's a whole adventuring party, and most of them are like, you know, not at the end of their adventuring careers. Um, Esmeralda is one person who can help a new generation of monster hunters be like, I'm on a quest, I need your help, we're taking on this vampire, let's be bold and brash and active in the way that really adventurers usually are, where Van Richten is going to be a bit more measured, is going to like study for years and then strike when the time is right. While that might be the wise choice, that is often not the most action-packed choice. So <laughs> you get to choose in uh, Curse of Strahd what patron, what ally uh, better suits your adventuring style. That's awesome. I love having options, as any Dungeon Master does. Um, so here's here's the thing, uh, and we can talk to you about more specifically about Barovia, but it also kind of pertains to almost all the stuff that might be here in Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. A lot of horror that's episodic has that ending, right? Like, oh, we killed the monster, everything's fine. You know, we go back to status quo at the end of the movie or the end of the novel. Um, something always comes up again, right? So is there ever a way for a dungeon master to tell this Ravenloft story that feels final, that feels like their players have accomplished something uh, and perhaps close the domain of dread or, 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 or end it in some way uh, so that, you know, future people can't open it up. Now, of course, future people will open it up in sequels, but, you know, yeah. h- how do you kind of do that kind of episodic storytelling so that it feels like something has actually uh, been accomplished? The monster has been vanquished. Barovia well, is now no longer under the control of Strahd or something like that. Well, one of the... One of the most exciting things about the domains of dread in general is they don't have to make sense. They're not a place on a planet. They're not that country over there. Like they are a mysterious shadow realm floating in an endless expanse of also more creepy shadows. Um, but the domains of dread are to an ex- to an extent, to a major extent prisons for these specific dark lords, for these D&D supervillains like Strahd. Um, So it is possible to go through an adventure like Curse of Strahd, face all of the different vampire-related perils, learn Strahd's history, ultimately be his undoing, and close that story, and then move on to future adventures or other domains of dread, or even possibly escape Ravenloft and go back to your lovely home. Um, All of these are possibilities. Um, By the same token, though, the dark powers that control Ravenloft are not so eager to just be like, oh, well, I guess that one's dead. He had a good (laughs) run. Um, like the domains of dread are about tormenting these dark lords over and over and over again. I mean, part of something that I've always enjoyed about the setting is that conceivably every game of Curse of Strahd that's ever been run could be canonical, could be this is one group tormenting Strahd who has endlessly suffered these slightly varying torments again and again and again and again throughout aeons. Um, interesting so yeah i guess that prison idea i never quite wrapped my brain around that but it is really interesting to think about how each story that's told in there are just more pinpricks in his own torture rather than torturing the the player characters and that's something that we really try to play up throughout van richten's guide as a whole is that 
you get to, yes, here is Dracula country, here's Barovia, here's do what you want, um, but you get to make the adjustments that you like and you can give it different spins that suit your party, that suit your tastes. One of the elements that we provide in the Barovia write-up in Van Richten's guide is, we mentioned before, that Tatiana is one of the things that keeps this character com- complete uh, or T- Tatiana reincarnating again and again is her MO. Like she is a character that Strahd professes to love, wants to control, just wants to have within his dominion, and she ever escapes him. But she constantly reincarnates, appears again, tantalizes and torments this villain endlessly and whether it's her soul or whether it's a creation of the dark powers is is sort of academic but this is a character that is the is the center of Strahd's torment again and again what we present in Van Richten's guide is how might you adjust that to make that make your own different sort of Curse of Strahd-like story. What happens is Tatiana comes back, but this time she's twins. What happens if she comes back and this time she's a ghost? What happens if she comes back and she's this, that, or the other things? How can you muck with just a few lines of code of the Curse of Strahd story to make a very different experience? That is 100% your own. I love that. I love that. I think that there is uh, so much ammunition there for Dungeon Masters to play with and to be able to kind of riff on these things. You know, uh, I'll admit I'm not a super fan of of horror in general, but I know really, you know, that there's this idea of returning to the same kind of themes and stories and how to tell them in, uh, in different ways with new characters or new ideas kind of inserted in. And I'm sounds like all of that is going to be available in Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. So last question, any thoughts about uh, how you as a dungeon master might run Barovia, um, you know, given all the new uh, things that might be available here in Van Richten's Guide? Ooh, um, so the Curse of Strahd story, the Dracula story is one that even if we've not played it before, we we know so well. And like one of the one of the fabulous things about it is that like Castle Ravenloft from Curse of Strahd is such a fantastic gothic horror dungeon. I mean, you can just you can get so many sessions out of that, and that's its own distinct creepy set piece. Absolutely love that. But with just a few tweaks you can do something radically different that can completely skew or change your player's perspectives. Um, So like even just doing something like, here's some wild choices that make Tatiana a different character or that puts her on your side or makes her a vampire hunter that's working with you. Or maybe, you know, makes... What happens if Tatiana's a werewolf? What happens if Tatiana actually left Barovia and you need to go on a domain hopping adventure to either keep her safe from Strahd's agents or to bring her back or whatever have you? So there's tons of spins on this this Tatiana versus Strahd story that doesn't have to be just the vampire hunts Uh, his victim, it can really flip the script on that. And I'm excited to see what folks do with it. That's cool. I love that there'll be a uh, potential for Curse of Strahd 2, Curse of Strahd 3, uh, or, you know, if that's your campaign name or whatever one ended up being your campaign name and, and, you know, have those, those kind of episodic feel uh, of, um, you know, say like the slasher movies of the eighties, right? Where there was always, you know, what happens in part three of the Dream Warriors? You know, like that type of stuff. I love, <laughs> I love that idea, uh, uh, and I'm hoping that more people jump in and, and grab this on May 18th. And uh, you know, Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft will hopefully inspire more horrible stories for years to come. Yeah, I'm excited to see what all the ghost stories, all the creepy stories, folks folks create at their tables. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Wes. Uh, You've done a fantastic job as leading this project, and I'm excited to talk to you more about Domains of Dread on segments to come. Cool. Thanks a ton, Greg. All right, thanks. Thanks.